Hello, and welcome to another chess video. This is Sixter. So, in the last one, we went over my loss to a rated 2150 player, uh, and I did promise that I would follow it up with a game that I won. Now, my two victories last week at the Martial Chess Club, I did have two victories and two losses, um, but my wins weren't really something that I, that I found something to be instructional. Uh, they were really just tactical combinations. So I think that um, I dug up this game, and I think there's more to learn from this game than the ones I played last week. Uh, this was play, played um, about a month ago uh, with the same time control, so 25 minutes each with 5 second delay. Uh, and my opponent was rated 1950. He was white and I was black. I'll, I'll keep in mind to make more videos where I am white as well. So he started off with e4, and I played the French. I'm fairly consistent with this opening, and I know the lines pretty well. So this is normal stuff. This is the advanced variation marked by this pawn push. Whoops. Oh, I messed that up. Hold on. Let me just... There we go. Okay. Sorry, that was weird. Okay. So, um, he plays a3, which I think is the most challenging line. Uh, I think uh, people like to play this pawn sacrifice line, where uh, play may develop this way. You play bishop d7, so that you can take this pawn. And this is a, this is a pretty sound sacrifice. Uh, it's very playable for white. All of white's pieces get out fluidly, uh, and uh, notice how undeveloped Black's pieces are. So it's a very playable pawn sacrifice. Um, I think Joel Benjamin used to play it with some success. I might be lying. Um, also, just quickly, the point of Bishop d7 in this move order is because if I take immediately, and this is a very good tactic to know, takes, takes, check, and you lose your queen. So that's why we play Bishop d7, to prevent that. So he played a3, and he didn't feel like sacrificing a pawn in the opening, which is fine, and c4 is the most principled reply. He goes g3, and I play knight here, threatening to come into the b3 square, so he blocks it, and bishop d7 just developing. And he plays this, uh, this weird idea that I keep seeing a lot. Um, I never actually saw this idea in books on the French, but I keep finding it in play. The basic idea is that he's going to move the knight out of the way, and go for this pawn push, and if he gets that pawn push in, then the bishop is well placed. If, right? So I develop my knight, and he immediately moves his knight out without continuing development. So I say back, and he goes back. Uh, something actually I missed was that he did not have to go back, and this is something. I guess I really blitzed out my move. This is something that I should have seen, because it's common enough. He had check here. And, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I messed up the line. First you take, and then if I take, now you have a check, and this diagonal is open. Uh, the funny thing is that black lucks out. Uh, there's a computer line that gives this, taking the pawn, and then you have king f7, and it's actually, the computer says more or less equal. Play could follow like this, and uh, black's plan is actually to prove that the knight is trapped. Uh, and I think this is hard for from the human perspective for white to play. Um, but it's complicated. The computer actually gives this as about equal. Uh, of course, I did not see any of this, and I did not feel like playing into this sort of stuff as black. Uh, this was a total accident. So, uh, I messed this up again. So let me... Okay, so... Instead, he, instead of taking, he simply retreated back to f3. And now I castled on the queen side. So I'm saying, do you still want to go for f4, f5? Because my king's on the other side of the board. He castles, and I play king b8 calmly. Just getting out of the line of the bishop here. So it's useful tactically. Plays rookie one, and I played f5. 
keeping the lines closed and now looking for a looking for a kingside expansion which comes to fruition so this is kind of a funny game because uh this knight actually goes back and forth a lot so he goes back for this and i guess he just missed a simple response of bishop e8 which in most of these positions is uh totally playable for black um I'm just going to respond with h6, and his knight has to go back. And so he played, I think, uh, I think this was the mistake of the game, f4. And so basically, the lesson that you want to learn from this game, um, it's it's kind of what was most instructional for me, is that um, if you don't want to move pawns on the side you're being attacked on. So it's only because he played f4 that later, uh, and very soon actually, I'm able to open up lines. In fact, in the next two moves, that's exactly what happens. I will not be able to make this pawn push and trade pawns to open up his king if he had not pushed f4. Maybe better would have been to just admit your mistake and retreat the knight. Uh, I think black, of course, has, has good play, but at least you, you don't have this f4, and so when g5 comes, you still have some time to build up counterplay. Uh, maybe with rook b8 or something eventually. Instead, he pushed f4, and I think that really helped me. Now, this is a pawn sacrifice. Um, but it's not so... It's it, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to realize that sacrificing a pawn to open the g-file is... It's peanuts for, for black. It's, it's easy. Uh, in fact, I don't think... I don't know if I had to calculate this at all, because the play comes so quickly. I attack the knight. And this this is kind of why I really like this game of mine. The way my pieces begin to get arranged. So now I attack, I pin the, this knight that's protecting this. So I'm just putting pressure on this g5 knight. He protects that knight, and I put more pressure. Notice how all of my pieces are suddenly shifting towards the king side. He plays h4, and I play knight b3. He goes here, and I went for the simpler continuation, which still leaves black with an advantage. Um, the computer says that this was the, the most solid advantage, and it's a way to keep the attack going with pieces on the board. So the computer go line goes something like queen c2, and then you follow that with taking now. Takes at f4. And uh, I really I enjoy these two bishops and these two rooks. Uh, for me, this position is quite aesthetic. Uh, and so things like... Oh, sorry. Uh, the move order... I messed up the move order. It's take here. And after, after recapturing, let's say with the bishop, f4. And if you recapture this... Uh, and this is just terrible for black. Uh, all the lines are opening up against the king. So, uh, that way there would be more pieces to throw into into the line of the king's fire. Instead, I just went for the simple continuation because I, I saw a pretty solid advantage, and I just traded everything off. Um, I do like the way I played this because I have all this pressure, and then I just traded off into um, just a very easily played easily playable endgame. So watch how I liquidate all the pieces. This is all forced. And then rook g6 was the point. Uh, so basically, all those exchanges were just to leave him with this pawn that, as I calculate, calculated it out, he cannot protect. After rook g6, my plan is to simply double up, and he's going to not only lose a pawn, but my kingside attack continues. So, now he runs with the king, gets off of the file, and, I, and I'm going to win that pawn. He comes and takes the h-file. I take the pawn, and he tries to get counterplay on the 7th rank. I move my knight, and now he has this as a possible threat. Um... And I think that he did see my next move, but he miscalculated and didn't see see a little bit deeper. I took his pawn here. I think I think he 
he was strong enough to realize that the the pawn is pinned, and so he can't recapture. And then he immediately played queen f4, pinning my knight to the king. And suddenly it looks like my king, my knight is going to be lost. I can't move my knight out of the way. And so he's just going to re recapture with the queen. Now, uh, see if you can pause the video right now and find the winning move for black here. Um, if you see one move deeper than this, you will find the win to the game. After my next move, the game was put away. So, I'm going to play it right about now. The move I played was King C8. I unpin, and it's so fortunate for me that the rook was on that square, the square D7. Now if he takes the knight, which he did in the game, I took his rook, and the game quickly ended. He went for this desperate sacrifice with the bishop. There was nothing better. And then I ran with the king. Um, yeah, maybe maybe he was hoping for this stuff. If I block, then he, he can desperately go for something. But I just played it safe, and I ran with the king. He gave one last check, and then in this position, he resigned. So I just want to go over the game really quickly again. Uh, this is the French defense advanced variation. Plays a3, c4... And he goes for this strange plan, uh, which never really happened in the game because I castled queenside. Knight e7. And so this journey of the knight from this square and back begins on this move. f6 was a blunder, remember. Uh, he should have played there and he could have had an advantage. But he went back, and I castled queenside. He castles, I get out of the way... And I play f5. So now I threaten. He brings his knight back, and I threaten to push on the king side. He plays f4, thinking that he stopped it, but I played my breaking move anyway. This is a pawn sacrifice. And suddenly, all my pieces very quickly come into play. I didn't go over it in the game, uh, but just the main threat right now, the reason he has to keep reacting is, and why I'm winning Tempe, is because say you do nothing, um, then the threat is just this, and if you move the rook, we take, uh, and if you take here, we win your knight w with the bishop, so if you take here, we win your knight, this, the knight's pinned, and if you, you move this, then we move it like that. And the final point is that after takes, takes, takes... Oh, I'm sorry, one sec. I messed up. Let me... Whoops. What was the line? The line is takes, and if you take with the queen, we take your knight. Hold on. Now I'm in the spotlight. We take your knight here, you recapture, and yes, and then this this move, rook g8, and your knight is trapped. Sorry about that. So, that's why he has to keep reacting immediately. He plays bishop g2, I play my rook out, and I really enjoyed how all my pieces were in the attack at this point. Everything except for the queen, really. Although the queen is doing a very good job pinning that pawn, and I noticed it from this far, from this far back. So I take, and then I just trade everything in order to win a pawn by force. So we played it like this, and then he thought that he trapped my knight, but I had king c8 in the end. Uh, and after this, the game was over. Here's on in this position. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, feel free to sub subscribe, like, comment, uh, and anything else you like. So, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.